No, we won't let that happen. Right, Grandpa? Right. Mr. Kotokawa should be here any minute. I could feel the fear slowly consuming me as my brain tried to wrap around the concept of death. Suddenly, the doorbell rang, and I snapped out of the thought. Grandpa quickly rushed to the door to open it. Takizawa, where's your grandson? Right this way. Mr. Kodakawa entered the living room where Grandma and I were at. I swiftly averted my eyes towards his, with hope that he might be the key to my survival. He looked back with a firm gaze and said, Good afternoon, Yusuke. I am the head priest of Hinemizawa Shrine. I'm sure your grandparents already informed you of my name. Mr. Kodakawa was a very strange-looking man. Even though he was the head priest of Hinemizawa's shrine, he didn't wear anything that remotely signifies his association to the local shrine. Of course, at this point, he really doesn't need it since it appears that everyone in town is already familiar with him. Y yeah you're Mr. Korekawa. That is correct. After a greeting, Mr. Kodokawa then slowly pulled out multiple paper charms from his bag that he brought with him. Yamaguchi-san, lead me to your grandson's bedroom. Understood. Right this way. I wasn't sure what was going on, or what he was going to do with all those paper charms, but Grandpa complied with his demands. After about 10 minutes, Mr. Kodokawa called for both Grandma and I. We both arrived to my bedroom only to find that the walls was covered with charms. It was a sight to behold, even though windows weren't spared. They covered it up with newspaper and placed charms on top of that. Not a single beam of light came through. Do not touch any of the sacred salt or the Buddha statues placed within this room. It is imperative that they stay this way until the break of dawn. Do you understand, Yusuke? Y yes sir. If you need to go to the bathroom, I placed a bucket here for you to use, alright? Uh, alright. Now listen carefully, Yusuke. This is very important. Hachishaku-sama will do whatever it takes to get to you. No matter what happens, you must never open the door. Do you understand? I... I suppose... Do you understand? Y yes Here's a watch to keep track of time. I have set an alarm to go off when it's morning. No matter what, do not open anything before this alarm. Also, as a secondary precaution, here's a paper charm. Hold on to it. If you ever happen to get scared, pray to Buddha. Uh, uh all right. I'm sorry, Yamaguchi-san. This is all I can do for your boy. I understand. Thank you so much for your help. I will come back tomorrow with a group of men in a van. I have a plan to save this boy, but we must act quickly once it hits the break of dawn. I will make sure that we are ready by the time you arrive. Alright then. See you tomorrow. And Yusuke, everything will be alright. Don't be afraid, my boy. And just like that, Mr. Kodokawa left without another word. By the time he left, it was time for bed. Grandma and Grandpa both prayed and kissed me goodnight. I wasn't really sleepy, so I decided to immediately turn on the TV as soon as they closed the door. I hoped that this would keep my mind off of things. It only took about an hour until I became bored with watching TV. I turned it off, and the room quickly turned silent. My eyes wandered around the room, investigating for anything out of the ordinary. It felt as though it was going to be like any other night. I decided to lay and stare at the ceiling while thinking of the events that happened today. My vision slowly became hazy, and the next thing I knew, I fell asleep. But not for long. Uh, 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 huh? What? Slowly. The sound of a human nail tapping on the window grew louder and louder to the point where I could no longer ignore it. My head was slowly becoming conscious again, and I started to wake up wondering what the noise was. I held my eyes shut for a few minutes and hoped that the noise would mute, but it didn't. The tapping kept repeating over and over and over again. It was to the point where the noise overwhelmed my own comfort. 
I escaped my bed and slowly made my way towards the window. I couldn't really tell what was causing all the noise considering that the window was covered up with newspaper. After standing in front of the window for a solid minute, the weird tapping noise immediately stopped. Complete silence befell the room. My eyes slowly drifted towards a small opening in the window where the newspaper failed to cover up. I slouched over to see what was on the other side of the window. <laughs> I fell back as I yelled with fright. My mind was a blur and I couldn't think straight. It was only after my mind had calmed down that I realized that that thing I just saw was Hachishaku-sama. That same woman I saw the day before. The first thing that came to mind was yelling for help. But I stopped myself. They already told me that no matter what happened, I should always stay inside the bedroom. A couple of minutes later, I heard footsteps rushing up the stairs. Suddenly, I heard someone calling out to me. My child, are you alright? Grandpa? Grandpa? I rushed over to the door as soon as I heard my grandpa calling out. I stopped immediately in front of the door, waiting eagerly to hear my grandpa's voice on the other side of the bedroom door. Grandpa? I... I saw it. I saw Hachishaku-sama on the other side of the window. I don't know what to do, Grandpa. I'm scared. It's okay, child. Just open up the door, and I'll make sure Hachishaku-sama doesn't get anywhere near you. But, Grandpa... Didn't you say that I should keep the door closed until the morning? It will be fine. Now hurry, child. Open the door. Something was really off about Grandpa. I just can't put my finger on it. Just the way he talked to me was kind of funny and weird. Whenever Grandpa would call out to me for something, he would simply address me by my name. Calling me child is very off-putting. I wonder... Could this really be Grandpa? Mr. Kurokawa had told me that Hachishaku-sama has the ability to impersonate the voice of a human she sees fit. I guess it was the demon's way of tricking its victims into thinking that the people they are talking to are real. At least that's how I see it. Regardless, that really does sound like Grandpa. You have to open this door before it's too late, child. Open the door. I... I don't know, Grandpa. You and Mr. Kurokawa told me not to do... Oh, wait a second. That knocking on the door. The rhythm sounds exactly how it sounded when the demon was tapping on the window of my bedroom. You're not him, are you? What are you talking about? Just open the door. No! You're Hachishaku-sama, aren't you? I quickly reached for the charms that Mr. Kodokawa gave me and prayed to Buddha. I felt the temperature of the room growing colder and colder by the minute. The voice that emulated my grandpa gradually changed into something unrecognizable. Go away! Leave me alone! The knocking on the door gradually started getting louder and louder as I chanted to Buddha. It grew so loud that I started to shout to overlap the noise. Suddenly everything went silent. The door, the voice, and the temperature of the room all went back to normal as before. I stopped everything I was doing and crawled back into bed and hoped for the morning to arrive. I squeezed my pillow as hard as I could until the weight of my eyes made me fall into a deep slumber. Wake up! What's going on? You need to get dressed quickly. Huh? I wasn't sure what was going on, but for some reason Grandpa wanted me to rush. All of the newspaper that was covering up the bedroom window has been removed. Presumably, my grandpa's work. I quickly rushed and threw on some jeans, and the first shirt that crossed my sight. I ran downstairs and quickly made my way into a white van that was parked outside the house. I took my seat rightfully in the middle of the van, surrounded by two of Mr. Kodokawa's associates in the back seat. Mr. Kodokawa himself on the left of me, my grandma on the right of me, and my grandpa in the driver's seat in front. 
Mr. Kodokawa prompted me to hold on to a Buddhist talisman and start chanting to Buddha while keeping my eyes shut. Of course, I complied. Whatever you do, do not open your eyes until I tell you so. Oh, uh, okay. I hunched over with my eyes shut. Mr. Kodokawa and his associates started their Buddha chants. On the other hand, my grandpa was driving off towards the village outskirts to get to the main road. A couple minutes go by, and I suddenly feel the temperature of the van dropping. I was certain that the AC was turned off, but I couldn't make sure since I had to keep my eyes shut. I heard a familiar tapping sound coming from the left window of the van. It didn't seem to grab the attention of anyone around me, so I assumed that I was the only one able to hear it. I really wanted to see what was making the tapping sound. The tapping just kept going, making it feel as though we've been on the dirt road for hours. Suddenly, I hear a faint sad voice. Who are you? <laughs> You're scared. Damn it, boy! I told you not to open your eyes! Mr. Kodokawa and his associates started to chant even louder. The tapping on the window started to get louder and louder as we approached the edge of town. Leave me alone! My grandpa started to drive faster to make haste. No, 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 stop! Leave me alone, please! Just like that, the tapping stopped. We made it onto the main road outside of the village. Even though the noise stopped, my tears didn't. All the way until we reached my house, I was crying and scared. I wasn't sure if Hachishaku-sama could reach me from here, but Mr. Kodakawa assured me that the demon was only able to reach as far as the edge of the village. Hearing that, it brought a little sense of relief into my life. Although the face of Hachishaku-sama would always be haunting me in the form of nightmares up until my current age of 25. I currently live in America with my girlfriend as a college exchange student. I will never forget those memories of me visiting my grandparents' house during the hot summer year. I hope that one day, I will be able to go back to that village and face that atrocity head on. But for now, I just want to forget all that and enjoy my life here as much as I can. Cause that's all I can do. Hello? Who's this? Hello? Hello? Are you serious? Is this one of those prank calls? Yusuke. Grandpa? I is that you? What's wrong? Come back. Wait, what? Come back? What are you talking about? Grandpa? Huh?